everyone. Welcome to my little talk show here. I'm Jeff, a two-time fantasy football champion and member of the support team at Smart Deploy. And with me today, I have Spencer, <laughs> who's our general manager here at Smart Deploy. And, uh, you know, I thought it'd be fun to have you on and ask you a couple questions about what's going on. So thanks for coming on my little show here. Sounds good, Jeff. Happy awesome. to be here. Awesome. <laughs> so you've been here a long time, 15 years-ish, right? Yeah, they still let me come around for some so. <laughs> uh, And you've been a part of every phase of Smart Deploy from like the very beginning, which is cool. And so, uh, you know, you, of course, you work with everybody here on the team, uh, but you also get to have a lot of conversations with a lot of our customers in those different businesses. So uh, what kinds of issues have you been seeing? Yeah, right now, a lot of Windows update stuff on Windows upgrades, um, really around Windows 10, uh, not so much 7 to 10, but really 10 to 10 and which version or flavor and which update right. sure. you know, people are running into. Um, compatibility problems, um, driver issues of one version working with one and not another, um, just keeping a handle or a consistent base on who's on what <laughs> version of Windows 10 really, mm -hmm. um, in-place upgrades happening to people when they're not expecting it. And you know, yes. obviously, make imaging software. So we're trying to help educate people on um, starting fresh and starting clean and keeping keeping latest if you can. Um, right. But people are also wanting to roll out, you know, O three sixty five and other cloud based services into their images and um, into their updates. And, and how you install those things is a little bit different than it used to be. Um, some ways are easier, but it's really it's really about education and knowledge transfer and helping people through this um, and, and keeping them up and productive. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, it's more, it's difficult with two updates a year and this can be a kind of drastic changes. Yeah. And a lot of times the IT guy who's used to being in control and in charge of when and how that happens is less in charge. And you know, Microsoft's trying to make the ecosystem better for people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we'll get there. I think they're, they're working towards the right things. Yeah. But it's just going to take a little bit more time and, you know, people want, uh, a consistent customized experience for their users, right? They want their own corporate wallpaper or their start menu or shortcuts. And right. how you do yep. those things is different than you used to. You end up with custom answer files and some things will or won't work. And so you got to do that in um, with policy and instead. And so it's um, just working and fine tuning those details with customers and making sure they get things working and productive how, how they want and how they expect. So nice. a lot of education around that. Yeah. Well, cool. Like, in, like you mentioned, Office 365, it's, it, it certainly feels like things are changing as far as the IT ecosystem. Yeah, right? for sure. I mean, and not just, it used to be, oh, you have a small business, you say you do things this, this other way, this light touch way. But now, like even medium and enterprise have to, you know, I don't know, play ball with this sort of new way of looking at how you do IT. So sure. like how, how, what are there any trends you've noticed of talking with these other customers, like how they do their IT? Yeah, I, I think one thing is everybody thought the mobile experience was going to replace everything. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, cool tablets and everything with, mm -hmm. with touch and sleek, cool looking devices. And thought, well, the PC's dead. You don't need this big cumbersome um, machines to lug around anymore. But the PC didn't die, at least for us, we're busier than ever in part that, People just want to be productive and they want to be productive on with the appropriate task or whatever they're working on, especially mostly more specifically in the business world, right? Um, you know, if you need to work on an Excel spreadsheet, it's pretty tough on your phone to pinch, swipe, zoom, enter a formula. Like mm -hmm. people, 10 keys still the most productive, just sit and type and do a lot of those tasks. So in, in the business world, anyway, the, the PC didn't die. Uh, and it's just really about, you know, optimizing that experience for people based off of what they're doing. And so, you know, rather than supporting, you know, one device, you're supporting three screens everywhere. So everybody's got a phone and a tablet and a PC and right. they want to use all of those things um, when it's appropriate. Um, I don't know about you, but if I need to send somebody a text message, it's more than about eight words. I, yeah, I, I'll wait till I get to my machine or something. Right. Same. So. Yeah. And I remember, you know, when it was big, the tablet was the big thing. Like you can be just as productive on a tablet. I sat down on, on one of those and like the, the iPad was supposed to be the iPad pro and I kept, I wanted to reach out for my mouse. mouse. I'm like, <laughs> I guess I'll do this. And, you know, that, and I mean, and it's cool. You can be on the, on the go and depending on what you're doing, but like Excel's a perfect example. No one's going to say, I'm going to just work on my Excel report and, and create all this stuff without a mouse and everything. So yeah, yeah it's, it makes sense that the PCs, Dynadyne, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. 
But yeah. on the other hand, uh, from the techie side, still pretty cool what tablets <laughs> can do. Uh, yeah, awesome. Well, uh, I did want to talk about security. Always oh, important, especially for, for IT. Um, geez, these days we're seeing a big uptick in issues around compliance, and it's kind mm-hmm. of alphabet soup out there, whether it's GDPR or it's SOC compliance or HIPAA or some other thing, depending on your industry. Um, these things have varying degrees of importance or varying uh, differences on who needs what kind of certification. So yeah. even to transact business with some companies, you, know, you got to fall on a certain list with some checks and boxes, right? Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of that is being driven in part by, you know, bigger move to cloud services and certainly Microsoft and Amazon and Google are doing a ton of ton of work on saying, well, you know, Azure, AWS or whatever platform is actually more secure with all these compliance things in your on-premise network. And so right. that's becoming attractive for businesses to make the, the switch for those reasons to just, you know, check those compliance boxes and make sure that they're not going to end up on the front page news for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, So we see quite a bit there and a lot of customers working on that. I mean, um, even internally, we had some um, changes in policy and discussion even around passwords. Yes. It it may sound sort of simple or funny or, uh, you know, the impact a simple password can have, but even just kind of the thought and theory around what a complex or secure password is evolving and changing. Um, So rather than frequently changing your password to something like, short and and complicated with special characters and capitals and um, things like that and changing them every 90 days or whatever the thought is make something um, memorable that's long and and harder to right harder to crack so um, some of that's been fun or interesting and just keeping a more secure handle on that you know using password managers to manage those and you know not knowing the passwords to any of your any of your accounts because I'm not I've students. actually switched to a password manager myself yeah. um, I kind of had to because I had an unfortunate email address my name is jeff at gmail.com which was fine <laughs> until it was in that movie 22 jump street where everyone wanted to use my name is jeff because they make a joke about it <laughs> and I was getting password reset requests for every service that I had signed up for and I had to change my email address I don't have it anymore I had to give it up and that's when I made the change to go to a password manager. And it's great because you can have all these secure passwords. Now, like if I have to sit down and log into my Amazon account on a foreign computer, it's, it's if I don't have my password manager, yeah. but you know, that's a trade off, right? Cause you have a more secure password. Yeah, for sure. I, I had uh, identity issues and you end up, you know, canceling your checking account, opening up new savings mm-hmm. and this is a huge hassle. And so, you know, like you, I, I made a switch to a password manager in that, yeah. that way. So it helps with your home life as well. You know, you yeah. don't need your wife having using your password on all of her stuff. And now you're doubling your yeah. sort of. Uh, um, threat and threat I don't need to worry about when my son turns 12 and gets a hold of my <laughs> iTunes password and buys everything. $3,000 worth of gems for a Clash yep. of Clans or something. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Uh, right email. Too. Uh, well, I was anticipating that passwords would come up. And so, uh, we were gonna, I was gonna play a little game here with, uh, you probably saw the comic where, uh, on, uh, XKCD, where they were talking about the, um, the difference between using a password that's hard for a person to remember, but in in doing so, you have a password that's very easy for a computer to crack. So I got to use a passphrase on the computer here. And so like, uh, I remember when I was, you know, first when I was a teenager starting to use computers, I thought I was really that slick. Wasn't that long ago. <laughs> uh, I would, I had a little pattern here, like I would just go up one row and then come down and then add a, a special character. And now, to me, no one's gonna get on my computer and guess that we have Z A Q one two W S X bang. Like this is super secure. But if you look, approximate crack, crack time is four hundred and sixty four milliseconds. Which is it's a fun party game, right? <laughs> what would uh, what would be another uh, password that sounds secure that isn't? What if we did? You're driving. Go for it. You're driving. Go for it. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> if we just take a phrase, and this is kind of cool, right? Like passwords are kind of out. You don't, you know, we don't want to do. Uh, or do you remember in hackers where you know? in the movie 95 or whatever everyone is 
the password is secret. Mm -hmm. And then this would take eight milliseconds. So password is out. Even if you wanted to say, I'm a we hacker. Do you remember when typing like this was cool? Using Lee Hacker? It's still cool. Even if uh, a <laughs> Lee Hacker, and again, you think, oh, this, no one's going to guess this. It has numbers and letters, and even I'll throw a bang at the end. It would take a day, which isn't very long. So, yeah, I mean, I mean seemingly if it's, if it's that easy to make something super secure, yeah, why not? I mean, what's the difference between... Um, yeah, <laughs> that's something that's Bears crazy long. Bears beat Battlestar Galactica. What Since a great... centuries. It's never... Now, the, now, what's disappointing is I can't use this as my password because the whole internet knows that I want to use this. <laughs> well, the, the other funny part, too, is some websites won't allow lo these longer things that are much more secure, right? Some, right. some websites of forms and fields um, will be limited on number of characters or spaces or... Uh, maybe they're requiring them to be changed frequently or um, right. won't allow a special character. And so I, I think that's part of it, too, is other organizations need to sort of catch up and everybody get on the same page of this is actually better, right? Right. Well, even 12 word, that seems excessive. <laughs> I wouldn't want to type that in, but, you know, I don't even know what this math equation is. That would certainly take a long time to crack. So... Well, there you go. For everybody following along at home, it's time to ditch your uh, super secure password and find a new passphrase. Like, uh, how now? Brown cow. 14 years, I think. I'd want to even a little more of that. 33 centuries, just adding a space at the end. That's pretty interesting. Well, anyways, awesome. enough of use of passphrase.com for us, anyways. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool to know. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks for coming on you to my little it. talk show. And I'll remember you when I'm famous no as one of my <laughs> early guests. Uh, so, yeah, until next time. Thanks, everybody, following on the Internet watching. I wanna, won't hurt if you subscribe because the more subscribers, the more money they're going to pay me. That's fun, right? Anyways, I'm just kidding. Anyways, I'll see you later. <laughs> Be sure to hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Oh, that was nice. You're nice. No. Yeah.